Welcome back to the CA Short Company All In Employee Podcast, where we're all in and give generously. We're so glad you're here. I'm your host, Cherie Lucas, and today my co-host is CA Short's VP of Employee Employee <laughs> Engagement Strategies. That's all right. It's all the same. Yeah, Engagement yeah. and former host of the All in Employee podcast, Scott Russell. So excited and happens mm-hmm. to be one of my favorite people. So yay. Hi, hey, Scott. You're doing a great job as host. Listen, I couldn't put it in better hands. So I'm, I'm <laughs> thrilled to be back and uh, guest with you on this uh, fantastic episode we got planned. Oh, so excited. So excited, Scott. And makes me so happy to have you here. Uh, So today, before we get into the meat of our whole podcast and and bring on a guest, I wanted to just reminisce with you a little bit. Uh, I have some wonderful mentors from my life from the, uh, from the very beginning. And so I was going to talk about those and give you a chance to talk about yours too. I have a couple of mentors who are, have always been at the top of my list and still are my mother and my mother's mother. Now my mother's mother has passed for quite some time, but that has not affected how much she teaches me. Even today, I still hear her in my head when things go wrong, the day's not quite what I want it to look like, or I'm just outright, you know, feeling pretty grumpy about what's going on. She would always say, oh, just look at it as an adventure. Back then we used to read boxcar children and uh, things like that. And she would say, Oh, just think of yourself as the box car children hopping on a train and going on your next adventure. She goes, it's a break from the routine and a break from the boredom. So that has really served me well. And my mother would use a phrase. I don't even think she realizes that she always says, just think, just think. She, she really taught me to switch or flip my mindset, my perspective to the good. So both of them really helped me to, you know, what we would all call find the silver lining or the gold nuggets, right? And it has served me so well. And another person that I know um, had a phrase similar to that is our beloved and departed Jeff Ross, who would say, what if, right? He would Mm -hmm. say, what if and why Mm -hmm. not? What What if if and why why not? not? Yeah. And so, you know, those just really profoundly and set the trajectory of my whole life. And I'm so grateful for it because it built such an amazing, strong, durable, steadfast foundation for me to be able to build upon and see life as something wonderful and something to just go for and enjoy, right? And to uh, just live largely. Do you have anybody like that or any phrases or so, way? Well, of you know, so mine are, mine are kind of, uh, I guess a little different. My mentors come from everywhere, um, all the way back to, um, you know, I have a, a, um, a, a, what do we call it? My sixth grade junior high guidance counselor, um, who is still around to this day. Uh, she, she's up in Rochester, New York, and she was a great mentor for me. And then that led in sort of, you know, into business and into things. And then in my family, um, of course, there's my mom and there's Nan and there was Granny Edna, who Granny Edna is probably the funniest person I've ever known in my life. And um, she had a lot of great sayings, but I can't say a lot of them in the public or on the on this show. But they are some of but I but to your point, I still hear her all the time in my head. Right. Um, But what I will tell you is I had a, um, you know, several career mentors, uh, Jeff being one of those and others in my life. And one thing that was always said to me, of course, being in marketing and engagement was to say less, but mean more. And and I really took that that because as a writer and as a person who, um, you know, in my young youth of my career, you're always trying to prove your point. And I would have those big lengthy emails where I'm trying to prove. And I remember having a, a mentor who was one of my former bosses and actually just visited uh, her, got to see her recently in Florida. Um, And that was one of the messages. She said, you know, you can be strong and have conviction, but you don't have to 
prove out everything in, in your writing the same way or in your speech. It's like it, find the most powerful and effective words and use those to your advantage. So um, and make well of time. Right. Because all people are uh, you have limited time. So say less, mean more is my good message for today. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's profound. It really is. Less really is more. And I don't know if, you know, if you notice the people who save their words and don't say them unless they have something really important to say, people tend to listen to them. Right. Instead of those, instead of when we just chat, 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 chat all the time, everybody just doesn't listen anymore. Right. So there's something, there's a great profundity to that. I love that. And isn't yeah. profundity a, a fun word? What a fun it word is. to say, profundity. I'm it a big is. wordy, you guys, and I just love words. And I think that one's kind of cool the way it rolls off your tongue, profundity. <laughs> I know, I'm a, I'm a big nerd. I'm a, such a word nerd. Word nerd, word nerd. Another one I love is a, a hyaluronic. I mean, you know, that has to do with like oh, hyaluronic acid and, your, yes, and all yes, that, but I love that that's word. That's making your face look fabulous. Yeah, yeah I got it. I own some. The, I don't but use just enough, say it. Obviously. Like say I'm the word, right hyaluronic. Here. Hyaluronic. Say the word hyaluronic. hyaluronic. It's fun to say, right? Hyaluronic. It is. Hyaluronic. It is. It I wish is. that hyaluronic could take care of this aging on my neck. I think I'm going to have to find a body. Take you care know. Of all of this. That's <laughs> just life. That's just as we're growing. We're growing. Well, Scott, um, so back to the the wisisms, I'm going to call them wisisms that we've learned from our mentors. Um, today, we have a, a very special guest that I'm really excited about. I've I've met, and of course, it's one of your dear friends, and so I'm so excited. So you're going to get to introduce this person, but this person wrote a book, and it's full of each chapter is things that this person learned from their mother, and then and then from God through her mother um, to guide her through life and to make it meaningful and purposeful. And so it is, it's so great. I'm really excited to talk to this person about it. And I would love right now, Scott, I'm going to admit the, uh, her, sure. I will say her, and Scott's going to introduce her sure. for us. So our guest today is, um, she was a season six top three finalist on American Idol. Uh, and, and and I didn't know her then, funny enough. I actually watched the show. She's my favorite idol of all time. And I was very um, fortunate in my life to have crossed paths with her. She has since become, uh, she's been on the stage. She's been, um, uh, she's hosted her own podcast and other shows in the past as well. She uh, has uh, an album and a book and all kinds of fun things. And she even gets to work with us, which I love is our ambassador of appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite title ever. Um, and so ladies and gentlemen, uh, our guest today is my dear friend, Melinda Doolittle. Hi. Hey, good Melinda, morning. I'm so thrilled to have you here with us today. Thank you for agreeing to give us some of your precious time. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> it's We're exciting excited. because I know that uh, Melinda, we we got to do a, a sort of a, a, an episode years ago. Um, but yes. the perspective Cherie brings is totally different. And we're going to, I think she's got some great things to talk about today. And we're going to talk about some of what you're getting into, some new areas that you're getting into. So Cherie, take it away. All yeah. right. <laughs> Melinda, I'm so excited. Um, Scott and I have just been chatting a little bit about mentors in our lives who have really, you know, taught us some principles that have helped us to build a great foundation in our life and to shape who we are and how we see the world and how we experience the world, right? And I love that. And, and I thought of that because of you, because you wrote a fabulous book that I have been just eagerly and just <laughs> voraciously read. And it, I love it. Beyond Me, Melinda Doolittle. You guys, it's amazing. Uh, I I love it. And it all of it hits home to me. It sounds like you and I have a very similar background with our family, especially on the maternal side. Uh, my mother, my mother's mother I was so in, instrumental in shaping who I am today. And so I love what you have to say in here. And I want to start with that, if that's all right, uh, you know, you're welcome Absolutely. to tell us whatever you want, but there's a few chapters I want to ask you about because the the uh, titles are not quite as self-explanatory as some of the other <laughs> chapter titles. So is, can we start there? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. All right, so uh, there's really four of them that I thought, okay, let's just talk about this. You said on time is soon enough. What does that mean? 
Well, okay. So most of most of the chapter titles are things that my mommy has said to me growing up. Um, and that is one of the things, you know, when you are kind of going after something in your life and it feels like it's taking forever, um, the the point of that is just that there are other things happening that maybe we don't know about. So when it happens is the on time part. Right. And that's, yeah. So even though the wait feels long and it feels like, oh my gosh, I've been asking for this forever. Um, a lot of times when you finally get it, you realize, oh, <laughs> that's why I waited this long for this. Like there, there was a yeah. reason for it. And so it's the, it's, it's that. It is that on time is soon enough. And um, my mommy and I are people of faith. And so we, we most of the time are like, God's timing works perfectly, you know, and it's, yeah. it's that for us. So um, that's what that chapter really is about, is being patient in the waiting, seeing what you can learn hmm. from the journey as opposed to just getting to the end of it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I'm not just, it's, it's not about the destination. It's about that journey. And yeah. I want to share with you, I love that you kept saying waiting because several years ago, I also have big faith. And so several years ago, God gave me this amazing redefinition. He said, redefine the word waiting. Cause I kept saying, God, I'm just so sick and tired of waiting. I'm sick and tired of waiting <laughs> all the time. Wait, 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 hurry up and wait. And yeah. he's like, Precious girl, redefine that weight. And he gave me an acronym, W-A-I-T, wonder and awe in today or wonder and awe in this moment. The T is today or this moment. And when oh, I started I having that. that perspective, I be, oh, I've got chills right now because I the what happens when you just focus on what is present for you right now, the present. Yes. There's a reason they call it the present. It's a gift. And what have you been missing right here, right now in front of you, because you're so focused on what you're wanting out here. And yeah. the waiting is all about that gift and gifts, right? Exactly. Is that awesome? And I love that so much. And it's actually really great that we're having this conversation right now because I needed that reminder just for myself. You know, like you, you write this book and you, you say all of these things that you've learned and then sometimes you forget to live it. And so I actually was just, speaking to myself in that moment and you were speaking to me. So thank you. Perfect. Yes. And so I just want you to know everybody use this in your life, but do not steal it. This is going to be in my book. <laughs> put, it, put it in your book. Yeah. It's all you. Now, now I'll give you Wait. guys the, uh, let me give you the counter side of that, which is a, a, something that Jeff used to say um, from the business perspective. He had one that was different, but similar. But what he would say is when would now be the right time? And what that meant was how, you know, you have great ideas, you have great initiatives and great motivation, but are you ready to do that now, right? Is the right time now? Are you, or are you going to sit back and go, I'm waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, waiting for the right I time. I love it. And yeah, so in the same cool. essence, that's funny because that's the one I hear when you, hear, you say that from mommy and I hear that one from Jeff all the time is when would now be the right time? Love that. That's awesome. That's really, that's so important too. Cause yeah, I've had to do that. I'm like, Sheree, really? When is now going to be? When is right. the right time? And right. yeah, that's so important. And yeah, sometimes you just got to Well, and I think off. one is, one one side is, is, is realizing that life comes at its own pace. But then on the other side is, if you have control of some of that pace, yes. when do you make that happen? Right? And, yeah. and are you, are you making excuses to not move to the space that you should be in. Yeah, you have to do all that you know to do in the waiting. Like, even if you feel like things are taking a while, like there are things that you can be doing and you definitely have to keep up right. with that. So I love Because Tom that. Petty says the waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> it's the most beautiful part, though. The hardest thing is the most Ronstadt beautiful, I think. Linda a great version of that, by the way. <laughs> Just let you know. Well, there's a really great quote that is... Um, Sometimes a leap of faith is the only mode of transportation available. Oh, wow. I, th oh, I think that's, one. I think it might've been Marianne Williamson. I'm not, don't, don't quote me on that. Cause I don't, I'm not hundred percent <laughs> sure. So, but isn't that wonderful? That's like, wow, one. that, I mean, awesome. all that's these good. profound things. It's amazing. Okay. Well, let's, okay. This one is a fun one. Uh, chew the hay and spit out the sticks. What in the world is that? <laughs> uh, we know so, this one. Uh, I lived in Oklahoma for 10 years and, um, 
loved riding horses and things like that. And um, one of the things that horses do when they're eating, um, they eat hay and they chew up the nutrients in the hay, but they spit out the sticks because the sticks hurt their mouths and it's bad for them and everything. And it was, um, it was actually a pastor of ours that, that gave us this. And then my mother used it on me relentlessly. Um, <laughs> it was how to deal with criticism how to deal with people coming at you and saying like, I didn't like how you did that or how you said that. And there would be the part where you needed to be honest with yourself and, and say, is there some truth in this? Is there something that I can learn from this? That part I want to chew up and use to get better. I want to, I want to use it to fuel me in the future. And then the things that are meant to just hurt you spit it out. Yeah. So that was the chewing the hay and the spitting out the sticks Ugh. because there's always, well, there's not always, but a lot of times there's something you can learn from criticism. Sure. You know, there's something that can help you grow. And if you're able to be just real with yourself and say, okay, okay, they were right. I may not have liked how they said it, but they were right. I, I could use that. You know, and I that, think that, that, that is the epitome of the experience you had on idol because oh, yes. for such a public critical moment right because that's what it is and i think back i mean i see your season right now and i can see simon saying oh my god i love that song but i don't like what you're wearing this week that's All the, the stick spit it out yeah look, look at what he wore for god's sake so spit that I out mean, we used to talk about baby. that right those baby gap t-shirts baby every gap time. t-shirts yeah but you took the good parts and yes. you have to learn to do that. But that was just to help you along in your career hardcore because you have your career is very public. And mm -hmm. so that that criticism of what we see today now, I think, you know, the, the odd thing they say is American Idol sort of brought this on is that yes. now people are just basically <laughs> this way with every person. Right. Like it's everybody. Right. They're going to tell you how to parent, tell you how to work tell you how to do, you know, everybody has their opinion and they just feel like it's okay. Yes. And so really that message alone is probably one of the biggest that we need in our society today. It's, it's a big one, especially because of what social media has opened up for, for us. Like everybody can have opinions now. Yeah. I don't like and it. I, I don't love it all the time. Um, but if I post something, then I am opening myself up for whatever Correct. criticism comes, right? And so it's like being real with myself and saying, do they have a point here? Or yeah. are they just saying hurtful things? You know, so yeah. it's been it's been really good. I've actually learned a lot on social media. <laughs> um, I know you're rolling your eyes, but let me you know tell I you. Am. You know Sometimes I am. people have really, really great things um, to say that have been really helpful for me. And they may not say it in the best way, but I, I have learned and grown from it. I, that's so, that's profound. I mean, it's just true and it can be hard. It used to be that only people like you who were known by lots, you know, so many people because you were on TV or whatever yeah. were the ones who nobody could really relate to the uh, magnitude of it for you. But it really is becoming everybody really can experience that mm -hmm. in our society, you know, especially through work, you know, because the whole work environment since the pandemic era has changed and everyone yes. is online. I mean, every time we stare at ourselves on this screen, we're just <laughs> criticizing ourselves. And we know that other people are just sitting there going, ooh, what is that on her? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, yep. Tell me. Every time like, I open gosh, my I'm mouth, I really I look, look at like my, that. they're like, what's wrong with him? And I have all these braces <laughs> in my mouth. I had oral surgery this week too, by the way, Melinda. So you are lucky oh, I can even talk today. I'm and impressed. So you know Scott, how I hate going through this process. Scott, does anything keep you from talking? I don't no, think so. No, hardly <laughs> anything keeps me from talking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's the truth. It, it look as you That laugh. is so but true. You look fantastic. But you can't even tell. You, you don't can. have, where are the chipmunk cheeks? This, what happened? This, listen, this amazing dentist, I got to give her some credit was able to go in here and do what she had to do and didn't move a wire or a piece of metal she wow. went in and cut stuff out and everything it was crazy 
That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, yay. I ain't going to be Thank chewing no really. hay for at least another few days, though. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> Scott, I forgot to, to take time to appreciate you for being here today. Thank you. Because it is so much fun for me when you co-host. I, uh, I, I can't, love getting you know, to be here. It's, it's awesome. I love getting to be here. <laughs> all right. Let's, we could be here all day, so I'm going to keep us moving. All right. Tell us a little bit about lose to win. What does that mean? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's it's one hard of the to harder ones. A little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, um, that's one of the harder ones for me. But I, I will say that that truly came out of my American Idol experience. In that, um, you know, I ended up getting third place on the show, which is really awesome. Amazing. Um, so that extraordinary. Uh, it's exciting, but it wasn't technically winning, right? And so a lot of people would be like, I'm just so sad that you didn't win. And I I, I hate that you didn't win this show. And I, I started thinking about the fact that like, I won so much in it. And it almost took me not winning to see the beauty of what happened through that process and to see the doors that opened. And sometimes... Um, I, Jordan and I are still extremely close. She's the one that won my season and I still call her my baby girl. I am her mama and that is how we do it. Um, and when she won, things happened so very quickly for her that the first five years were just a blur. And for me, because I didn't win, things happened at a bit of a different pace and I was able to just take in the journey, enjoy the journey. And I felt like I won something in that just by losing. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes yes. people call it a loss and it's not always a loss. You can gain mm -hmm. something from it. You can learn something from it. Um, you can see the good in what has happened and how it's happened and still celebrate the winner. Like I love it for Jordan. Like I love that she won. And I well, now I love it for I Jordan, won. but I don't love that she won. Let's just be clear. I, I voted for you. I was watching you that season. And but now we both won. And he, he who shall not be named that came in second place. What the hell? So yes, I just said you had, that was your spot. But I, you know, I agree with you because I will say this too. You know, even in, in our careers, <clears throat> Um, and many of the people on here, and, we, and I won't get into those specifics, but, you know, when I left a long standing career for myself with a former company, um, I would say I got some people call the same. I'm so sorry to see you go. I'm so sorry to see this and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me promise you that was the best decision I ever made. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. you, I, you know, in their eyes, wow, you're, how are you going to get, how are you going to replace this role or how are you going to replace this income? How are you going to do that? Well, that has led me to where I am today and where I will be tomorrow, where, you know, as we move into yeah. the future of our lives. And so I, I fully support that one as well, that, that what you perceive sometimes to be a loss or others perceive to be a loss is just perception. And and on the yes. other side of that can be can be great things, right? Great, wonderful things. So I, you know, and I often wonder, because I'll say it this way, had you won, I mean, the chances would be 10 times or a hundred times slimmer that our paths would have crossed. Because you we right. we met during that window. We met during, like yeah. you said, that first five-year window. So most likely you would have gone on and never met me and never had the pleasure of being my friend. It so is very I'm, true. I'm okay and with you doing third miss. place. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Come Belinda, on, I do just want to take a quick moment to pay in this moment to tri pay tribute to your mom, because you said you truly were happy for and celebrated Jordan. And you uh, were able to do that because your mom so very intentionally trained you to practice doing that. Do you want to just tell what yes. she did? <laughs> I mean, so it was just my mom and I growing up. So just the two of us. She's actually upstairs in her room trying to be quiet right now as we <laughs> as we are here at the house recording this. But um, she would we would play games 
together. And you know how parents kind of let their kids win and everything so that the kid can get used to winning. Well, she, it was very important to her that I um, not be a sore loser, that I learn how to celebrate other people's wins. And so she just showed no mercy. Like that's she exactly would, what I was thinking. Yo mama is not would, showing no mercy. None of it. Like she would just <laughs> beat me in the game and be like, well, mommy won. And I, I would have to, I was learning how to congratulate her in that. And it took me a minute. Like there were, there were many times where I was like, I'm so happy for you, mommy. <laughs> like I'd be crying, <laughs> trying to tell her I was happy for her. But at the end of the day, it really like, it showed me that I could maybe be sad for myself, but also be happy for her, you know? Right. So right. Um, it, it really brought me joy. And we do like victory dances for her. And I would be like, well, I still get to dance. Like, even though I didn't win, I still get to dance. So if I'm celebrating somebody else, I still get to be a part of that. And I think that has stuck with me this entire time. I love that. Love that. Love that. Because honestly, there aren't that many people in this world who sell, who really sincerely celebrate other people's wins because they, you know, have such strong feelings around losing. Right. Yeah, you know, and, well, and, and so can, that's why I'm yeah. so grateful for the training of finding the good in all things and the gifts and all things because then you're always a winner. Well, and people yeah. are full of jealousy and envy in their own agendas. Yes, and when you learn to push those aside. And find find the greatness in the moment. I think you come out so much better and on top. But I still love your mother for that because that makes me yeah. laugh every time I think about it. Because I know, knowing her, I can just visualize it right now. You can visualize. Maybe you don't lost. Give it up. You, I can hear her lost. saying it right oh, now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you oh, may yeah. need to call her downstairs to come pop in and say hi. <laughs> Playing the game alive, baby. You done. Your car ain't got no little sticks in it. You done, baby. Exactly. <laughs> Gosh, well, that's so awesome. Uh, so, by the way, I just wanted to insert this, Melinda, this is for your information. Everybody else, you don't have to listen, but I grew up with horses. And so I love your whole imagery with the, <laughs> the, oh, that's the, awesome. the hay and spit out the sticks or whatever. That's so cool. It hits home for me. So thank you for that. It's funny that I, 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 all of us in different places in our life, but have all been connected to horses at one point in time. That's funny too. Uh, horses Miss still horses. Just speak to me so much. I mean, I just, they're, they're, I'm very moved. So that's a, whole, yeah, that. that's a whole other episode. The horses speak yeah. to her. I'm not sure. We might have to have a different conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> She's well, the, the horse listen, whisperer now. Is that what we're most what we're people headed? have know that I speak to myself and I always tell them I speak to myself all the time, especially when I need expert advice. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. Me too. Talk to that's myself. That's awesome. That's what we do. Okay, so there's a couple of things I want to touch on sure. about your book, yeah. and then we're going to move on. And but and I'll just tell you what they both are right now. You wind up the book with the title Beyond Me, and then I know that this ties into your signature in the book. I have one that's signed in it, and you have a scripture that goes along with it. So what do you want to say about that? Well, I think um, it is very easy just in in the culture that we're in right now for it to be all about you. And um, I think the biggest lesson I learned, just I've learned it in life and in my experiences is that there is something much further than me. Like it, it is, it doesn't have to do all with me. Nothing is all about me and taking time to actually see other people, to see God in things, to see, that like that is where I have succeeded the in the best way. That is where success has come for me, and um, being able to dream outside of myself, have dreams that instead of just like what I can think of, I always yeah. like if I wake up in the morning and I'm having a prayer, I'm like, God, give me God sized dreams. Like let me dream outside of things that I could ever even think or imagine because. It, it could happen. And I believe that. And so yes. my, my favorite verse is Ephesians 3.20, which is now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that you can ever ask, think, or imagine. And I think that that is what makes me dream the biggest dreams and be patient in the waiting 
<laughs> as um yeah. as I see them come Dream big. in ways that I never imagined they would come, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um so I think that is that's the thing that has kept me going, even in things that feel like loss or feel like it's taking so long and all of that is that I have handed those dreams over and um, I, I am seeing the fruit of that now. I just hardly have words because that all speaks to me so much. Our hearts are very unified in that and that's how ah. I live as well. So I, it just means so much it, and I'm a little choked up because there's so much meaning behind that. Right. And ah. I know that Scott gets some of that as well. So what, but we want to go, that's a perfect pivot point to pivot into the future and your, and dreams. What are your dreams <laughs> and your passions and your, your callings for the future, Melinda? Yeah. Cause you're Gosh. doing, you're going to do some new thing. You're, you're doing some things with us, which I love. Yes. Um, I, get, I love my great title. Things. Thank you. I do. You're our ambassador of appreciation and we've already got some <laughs> things next year. I'm excited. Cause you, you do, um, you do get up and speak at different businesses and different events about the book, yes. um, kind of talking through the lessons you've learned and those types of things. And um, and any anytime you're interested out there, you can just reach right out to us and we can help you uh, make that happen. But you're you're doing something new too, because you and I talked about that this summer in a different direction for your career and where it's headed. And I'm excited yeah. about it. Well, so I, it kind of all started with. Um, I I have gone to therapy at a place called Porter's Call, and they are an organization who gives free therapy to to artists. So to people who are in this music business, that is a little crazy. Um, That was an understatement. It is a lot crazy. Um, (laughs) For people that are in this business, it's very specific counseling and therapy. And I love it so much, so much so that I joined their board. And um, when I joined their board, um, they started um, referring to me some of their artists that had been on reality singing competitions, because that is a whole nother kind of trauma of being judged and at such a high level and um, fame happening very quickly and all of that. And it, it helps to talk to someone who has gone through it. And so when I started speaking with some of these artists, I was like, I love this so much. I love pouring into like the next generation of artists coming up and um, being a part of that journey in that way. And the, the cool thing and the weird thing about going on a show like American Idol is that your career kind of happens a little backwards. Like it, you become huge right after you get off the show. So all the things that like artists strive for, they happen first. Like the, I did the white house and the Kennedy center and Carnegie hall and all of those things I did within the first five years, which is huge. Like such a gift that after that, it was like, okay, what do I do next? Like (laughs) what comes next after that? Right. And so in that, um, I have found this passion of helping other people get there and helping other people get there in a mentally healthy way. I think um, I would have enjoyed it more if I was mentally healthy while I was doing it. Uh, So it is really important to me to be a part of the journey. And um, so I have, when I tell you that I have just kind of taken a deep dive into being a part of other people's journey. And it has been the most rewarding thing I think I've ever done is um, being a part of seeing other artists achieve what they want to achieve, but also maintain their joy, their peace, their mental health in the process. um, But Melinda, what does that look like? What do you actually do to help them with this? It depends. It's different every time. It's different for each artist. Sometimes I'm, if they are out of the state, I'm getting on a Zoom with them and just talking through what they're experiencing. Sometimes if they're here and getting ready to go on the road, I can jump on the bus with them and experience the shows with them. And when they come off stage, talk about what that feels like. Um, 
the doubts that they're having, the insecurities, because you get off stage and that is probably the most insecure time you could have. It's like, I did it, dear God, you know? So um, being a part of that journey with them and just kind of getting them ready for going out and doing a full tour, um, that is exciting. Meeting with their label executives and talking to the label executives about how to better speak with their artists and how to... Um, Mm -hmm. approach them in a way that gets the best out of them because they're thinking in a business way and artists are creative. And sometimes those two things really clash if people don't know how to express themselves well to the other. And so it is being a liaison between the artist and their team. Mm. Um, So it, it is a little bit of everything, which is exciting to me because I don't like to do the exact same thing every day. I like for things to change up. A true and, artist, a true yeah. creative, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Scott, it, require, like. <laughs> it re- totally requires me to be on my toes and to just be whatever the situation needs. Yes, And it has been so awesome to see that the hardest parts of my journey have prepped me for this the stuff that I thought, yeah. you know, were losses or the stuff that I thought were um, things going the wrong way have actually been the foundation of what has started this new career for me and and has given me the insight that is so special for people right now. And so I can see the win in those losses so easily now that I couldn't see when I was going through it. Oh, I love that. And that is the truth. Don't you love? I always think of that as the jigsaw pieces all being put in place and you're beginning to see the picture form yes. when you're putting each in. I love yeah. it when that happens. And the, I kind of call that being able to look back and, and recognize the god People say that yes. coincidences or the serendipities, that's another word of mine that I, that's going in my book, god right? god <laughs> yes. But it's like, um, <laughs> it's and seeing it form the picture and it's just so beautiful, isn't it? And it's exciting to, to be in wonder and awe in anticipation of the more, right? Yeah. It's been awesome because it also has helped me, um, when COVID hit, I I came off the road, obviously everybody did, Uh, (laughs) you know, we couldn't travel. We were together. Do you remember that? We were literally together uh, when you came off the road. My last show before COVID was with Scott. Um, and, and, it and was the CEO in of March. the hospital said, you're going to have to cut this short because we're all going to be masked up tomorrow and six feet yep. apart. <laughs> yeah, the very next so, day. It was so interesting to navigate things stopping. And within that, um, I really was started to lean into the beyond me portion of my book and try to find something that had nothing to do with me, like had everything to do with other people. So I started working with a couple of organizations here, um, People Loving Nashville. We work with um, our unhoused population here, anyone experiencing homelessness or people just getting into housing that need some extra help. And then um, I work with an organization called Timothy's Gift that goes into prisons and we sing and, and go on what we call a hope tour to bring hope to people who have possibly lost hope and to remind them that they have worth. And me being able to be a part of organizations that are beyond me, that are focusing on other people has given me a perspective as I'm working with artists. One of the first things I do is say, find something that's not about you. Let's try, let's do that first because being an artist is very much, you're doing interviews, you're talking about yourself, you're all the time. promoting yourself. Right. Like it, it all feels very inward and finding those things that are beyond you is the key to maintaining that kind of mental health and um, really enjoying the journey on the way. So it's everything that I've been doing has tied together in the most beautiful way. It's very eclectic. It is a <laughs> every day is different for me, but it is it's been really awesome. To see. I you know I mm. w- one of the things I like about where you're headed and it's um and it's and I know this this really has just sort of begun uh, to take to take hold is you know e- even as we tie mental health mental awareness those things back into the perspective of what we do which is engagement recognition and appreciation 
um, they, they actually play a big pieces together because yeah. again, you think about showing somebody the appreciation and recognition, you know, I, and this is going to, this is going to go back to my RPI training and CRP and the Maslow's theory is that it does. I can't tell you how great you are if the basic needs for you are not met and those yes. include the basic mental needs, right? Yes. We always think physical, but the truth is you work in, and you know, you work with people who are Grammy award winners and who are big, you know, you're they're they're at the pinnacle of their game and, and, and people are telling them every day how great they are, but they still could walk on stage and feel less than in that moment. And it's yep. that less than that brings them down, right? The same way those of us who just in a business day could, could have that same feeling, right? Like, oh, I just yes. can't get through this day. I, I can't take, and, and if you're in a call center, I can't take one more call. Or if you're at a, <laughs> you know, I can't sell one more thing, or I can't do, I can't wait on one more customer, or I'm going to lose it. Or, you know, you have those moments. We didn't see that prevalent the way we have in the last few years, but you are seeing it now and in the business that you're in. We're seeing canceled tours. We're seeing canceled yep. shows. We're seeing people pulling out of this project or that project. And it's never, you know, been as highlighted as it is today. And I, and I definitely think, you know, that's something for companies and organizations they have to look at in our world because it, it plays heavily. I mean, if you, you can, you want to have great appreciation for your employee and at the same time, marry that, making sure that their needs are met. And that includes what the mental side of their needs, the things that, you know, that that keep them uh, happy yeah. and, and their perspective positive and things of that nature. So I do love where you're headed in this space. I think it'll be great conversation in our future as well when we're doing things together. But it, I, I just, you know, like you said, it, to, to have your whole life sort of build for that moment. You are the perfect person yeah. in this spot. Oh, thank you. I love I, it. I love it. I, I am in my now is the right time heaven. for you. Yeah. My yeah. I've, I I feel like everything makes sense. You know, like every everything that I've been through and that I've endured makes so much more sense now on this side of things. And I'm grateful because honestly, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I was like, well, I the singing was fun, but, and I'm not saying I'm quitting singing. I, but I would, I wanted to do less. I wanted to travel a bit less and, and find something different. And I, I really kind of turned that over to God and was like, I, I literally have never had another job. So that's going to be on you of figuring out what's next, you know? And it's been beautiful to, to just go on this journey. As long as we get blessed with that voice every now and then. I will I, I, I'm yeah. not stopping. I'm not stopping. <laughs> I, there will always be Christmas. You know my love for Christmas. So no matter what, um, I will do Christmas shows every year. Well, I, just mentioning Christmas shows, by the way, Cher has a Christmas album coming out. I just have to say that. It's like this, it's her first Christmas album ever, being a Cher lover, and it's coming out like right now or soon, so can we just say that? But um, yes, I have a great it. anecdote that I really want to share on this, because I don't think we've ever shared this one in public, but I love this one, and it... And it plays into like you talked about how your how your career was very big at all in the front, right? It was just it front yes. loaded. But I was very fortunate about I don't know how many I think I was forty five somewhere in there. But um, we were in Vegas doing an event, and uh, my dear friend Melinda for my birthday um, took me to see Celine Dion there at Caesars. And so there we are, and it's Melinda and and, and your mom, which I was, yeah. and Steve was there with us, and then your uh, somebody you worked with at the time was there as well. Yes, and we're all sitting there, and we were getting to see the show. It's the most amazing show ever. And Celine comes on to do this number, and on the screen in the background of the number is when she performed it on American Idol. And we look up on the screen and there's Melinda on the screen. And we, she didn't know this was gonna, you didn't know that was the way she did no. the show every night. No. So we're sitting there and all these people around us are looking at her and looking at the screen. And I just wanted to go, it's her, it's Melinda, she's right here. Cause it was during that season. And so there she, every night she had been doing that show with 
Melinda and the others from that season right up on the screen. And so she was, I mean, giant screen too. You that, were front was, and center. that. that was front the coolest and thing ever. I was like, wait, wait, I'm in the show. Like, I, I know mean, we were trying to keep our cool at the same time. It's Celine Dion. So like, obviously like the Mecca of vocalists. I know. And so I, I was wanted to throw you up on the stage. Just sing it live. She'll do the I, background live right here. <laughs> and literally in that moment, we were just her background singers and it wasn't, I was maybe on that screen for five seconds, but it was the best five seconds ever. And I'm so glad I got moment. to experience that I with mean, you. To do that. But look at, I mean, you've got such a great, I mean, you're young, you've got all this time ahead of you and all these great things for you still to do. And I'm excited that, um, you know, me personally, and that I get to be along for some of that journey wow. and for our business, that you're a great friend of ours. and. Love the message that you put out when we get to go travel together. And I think our next time is Denver around yeah. in the beginning of February. We'll be in Denver yes. together um, and excited to, to get to do that. It's always fun for me to talk to you always. Yes. Well, and thanks for calling me young. Oh, you're young and listen, and you're beautiful. You know, in the beginning of your book, oh, you kind of had a some conversation years. about that and not being beautiful. And you're so beautiful. You are just oh, radiant. Oh, so I, oh, I've been wanting to say that the whole time. You that are single. Very kind. She's also single. I, I am. I'm just putting that out there. Ha happily. Single. <laughs> <laughs> well, Melinda, I want to ask you one more thing before we go. We do have sure. to close, unfortunately. I could just chat with you all day. Um, at, at CA Shore, we talk a lot about being all in. Yes. So I know I'm putting you on the spot, but just what does that say to you? What does all in mean to you right now in this moment? Ooh, that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say for me right now, being all in means being present um, and truly experiencing all of the emotions that I feel in, a, in any given moment. Like our world is going through craziness right now. And some of it brings sadness. Some of it brings anger. Um, some things bring joy. Some things bring peace. And being able to be real with all of that um, and experience all of those feelings and know that they're all true and, um, but they can coexist. I think at first I thought like, I just, I just have to be angry about this and I can't experience any peace in the midst of that. I'm learning that I can, um, that joy and sadness can coincide. Um, all of that can happen together. And so for me right now, being all in means, um, being honest about everything that I'm feeling, being okay with that. Um, it also means showing up. Um, I'm mm. very much an introvert. Uh, I love being by myself. And so um, being in group settings and things like that um, aren't my, my default, but I'm learning that I get, um, I get so much from others that I, I do need to show up. In some spaces, I need to make myself uncomfortable to experience life and experience the beauty of other people. And um, I never regret it. I've never regretted it. So I, I would think that those would be my all in moments. And we get so much from you when you do show up. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So everyone, it's that time again, unfortunately. Thank you, Scott, to, for co-hosting. Thank you so much, Melinda, for just this wonderful, precious time with you. And thank you, viewers, for being with us today for the CA Short Company All-In Employee Podcast. It's been fun, it's been informative, and it's been engaging. Now, remember, you're either all in or you're all out. See you next time. <laughs>